I should have chose a different filter. Uh, and there we are. Hi hey. there. Hi guys, how are we doing today? We are doing great. How are you doing, I'm great. Francesca? I am doing great. I'm actually taking my lunch break right now, which is funny because, again, like most people right now, I'm working from home. So, um, oh. I mean, I've been working from home for like seven years, but today I'm taking my lunch break to have an uh, interview with you guys and we can talk all things Fate Destroyed. I'm excited. Absolutely. Cool. That's really awesome. So, good evening, everybody. Good day, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, today, we're going to spend some time with, with Francesca, who uh accepted to share a lunch break with us and that's really awesome yeah. and we, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, uh her musical career and of about her uh, band fate destroyed so it's my band uh, yeah fede how are you doing are you doing great um, are you ready doing great man i'm just drinking water let's see that's perfect so let's stay focused so, yeah. uh, Hopefully. Francesca, what's up? Uh, how's the situation right now in your hometown? Are you dealing with all the stuff, uh, smart working, something like that? Yeah, so I mean, I live in Los Angeles and okay. um, we have oh, some cool. pretty stringent uh, restrictions happening. Luckily, little by little, we are moving out of that and getting towards things being more open. But for the time being, all of us are unable to play shows, which is the worst thing that's ever happened to me because I've been playing shows my whole life. And this is the first time I can't play shows and I'm really ready for it to be over, to be quite honest. Yeah, that's great. Let's let's be a little bit more patience and patient and we will be back on the stage. Everybody will be back on the stage. And Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the beginning of uh, your uh, career as a musician. When, uh, Francesca, did you start singing and how? So, um, so when did I start singing? So actually, I've kind of been singing my whole life, but definitely not professionally. Um, mm -hmm. Fate Destroyed was my first time to try and sing, be the front woman, right? Because my whole career as a musician has really been based on being a bass player. That's what I started doing. Mm. That's how I did most of my touring throughout my life was being a bass player. And I think part of that for me is just that I really liked having that barrier between myself and the audience, you know, because mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do stage fright. And so when I have my bass guitar with me and I'm out on stage playing shows, I'm, I, I had that barrier. Um, but then eventually the time came where I was really excited to try and do my own thing. And um, I, about four years ago, I guess, I was like, you know, I've been singing in my shower by myself long enough. It is time to <laughs> bring this to the stage and write my own music. Um, I just really wanted to take ownership of my career and felt like, you know, I was being hired to do these, um, how do I explain this? Like hired gun type things, which is where basically I would get paid by bands to play bass on tour and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, or I would get mm -hmm, studio yeah. positions. So I would go mm -hmm. in and go into the studio and track for them. And I just wanted to elevate myself and get out of that trap. So that's kind of what I, that's kind of where it happened. And it happened about four years ago with Fate Destroyed. Okay. That's awesome. And uh, when, so, so that's the, Actually, moment the actual moment when you decided also to become a, a, a professional singer, or, or isn't it? Because this is really linked to our second question. Our second question is about when you started to uh, think professionally about uh, music, but maybe for you it, it was more about, about singing, about uh, maybe um produce something for yourself what what do you what do you say about that so um i think so the spark that brought me to the decision was basically that i felt like i had sort of reached this plateau of the mm -hmm. level that i could get to as a bass player right so I was trying out for really big bands and i was getting really good responses and people were super excited about it but um when I started trying out for, I mean, like, like radio bands, like big, big bands that would actually be financially sustainable, um, I was running into issues where people were like, we don't really want a girl in the band. Um, mm. which is true. And um, I realized at that point that, like, if I wanted to do music as a career, which I for sure knew that I wanted to do, that I was going to have to make some adjust adjustments in my game plan. Um, and that basically came in the form of 
deciding, you know what, like I have to do this for myself. I can't like continue to depend on other people to like get where they need to be. And I'm kind of a control freak. So um, I will never forget. I was actually on tour with a band called The Dreaming. We had just played a Stabbing Westward show um, because it was like the reunion show. And we played the show. It was a packed house, completely sold out. And I was in the hotel room afterwards. And I, for the first time in my life, didn't feel fulfilled. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, we were playing to like, easily a thousand people, easily a thousand people. And, you know, it was a pivotal moment for me because I was on stage with a band that I grew up listening to. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, it just wasn't there for me. It just, I literally Mm -hmm. sat in that hotel room that night. I had my laptop with me and I started writing break free. Cause I was like, you know what? Like I got to get out of this. I got to like do this on my own. And so that was basically the first step. And then now that song was our debut single and it's been (laughs) booking and cooking ever since. So. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I actually watched the video of the song. It's really interesting uh, be, because of the, of the uh, bloody part in the end of the video. Uh, it's about what you just talked, uh, what you just talked about. Well, I feel, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's sort of been a recurring theme in my life, feeling like I'm trapped. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's a nine to five job or whether it's in bad relationships or whatever. Like I sometimes feel even trapped within myself. Like sometimes I don't really know what I'm feeling about things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have no way to get out of situations. So the move for me was to write a song about breaking free and, and to realize that like, you know, I really am the only one caging myself and that I need to be able to move past that. And that's basically where that song came from. So yeah, that's really interesting. That worked also for us because our our first uh, album uh, is called One Way Out because uh, uh, we all found each other as uh, music fellows uh, that wanted to make music uh, as a career. And uh, so, in our opinion, music was our one way out from the routine and mm-hmm. from all the bad stuff uh, in the, uh, let's say, ordinary life. Yeah. Let's say that. <laughs> okay, that's really cool. And uh, just a curiosity, did you um, take some lessons for uh, uh, improving your uh, vocals? Uh, Vocal style, or are you a self told? Uh, I mean, I'm 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 YouTube taught. Oh. <laughs> so like I'm self taught. Like I grew up around music. My okay. stepfather was a multi platinum producer. Um, mm-hmm. he worked with like Paula Abdul and a few other like Michael Jackson and like really big name people. I grew up with platinum wow. records all over my walls. So like that is the lifestyle that I was accustomed to. And I was accustomed to being around musicians and being around artists. And so part of that for me was singing was part of my everyday life. I was around music. My hobbies were music. Everything was music. So um, since I was very little and then like, as I was growing up, I, uh, I, I did, I did the choir thing, you know? So that, so I did that for like, I don't know, very many years. And, um, uh, as far as like the screaming goes, I actually, when I was really young, I met this really awesome woman when I lived in Austin, Texas, and she was this badass pink haired law student who was also like the most brutal screamer I had ever like ever heard. And I had never heard anything like that come out of a woman in my life, mm-hmm. especially okay. at that time I was really young. Um, and I was like, I want to do that. I want to learn how to do that. And so um, after over the course of like being her friend and stuff, she sort of taught me, you know, like you got to do this and we would like work on it. And now I feel like I have it nailed in. And now I just scream in my apartment a lot. And I'm sure my neighbors are like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Uh, Fede, I see there are some people here with us. Let's say hello to some of our friends. Yeah. Say hello to David Francis. Hi, David Francis. uh, doing and also from our good friend Matthew Lee Anson hi guys hey, and Francesca hey, how are you man and also Wilbert says hi hi, hi Wilbert I like that name yeah me too okay oh, we can go oh, on I think yeah uh, so uh, you were surrounded by a musical uh, environment uh, have, have you ever uh, 
Mm, have you been living in Los Angeles since forever or uh, what? So or what I, actually, I actually moved to Los Angeles in August of 2012. Okay. Um, I, I moved here because uh, I was actually joining a sign band as a bass player. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I've lived here since 2012. So, I mean, I did the thing that a lot of people do, which is I said goodbye to everything I had ever known and everything I had ever loved and every family member that I had ever had and every house that I'd ever lived and was like, peace, I am out. <laughs> and so I moved to Los Angeles with a backpack and really nothing else. I slept on studio floors. I did whatever it took. And like now I've established myself, which is great. Um, but it, uh, it wasn't easy. And I don't think that it is ever easy for anyone to make the decision to take control of their life and to um, move across the country to pursue something that may or may not work out. Right. Cause it's a huge risk. Mm -hmm. The percentage of people who are actually successful in music is actually, I mean, it's small if you think about it, right? Like yeah. how many people of the musicians in the world that exist are able to make establish financial resilience. How many people do you know are able to take care of themselves simply by music alone? And, you know, I had that fortune for a few years, actually, when I was touring with The Dreaming, I was able to really just have music as my life. And that's what I did. I was a musician. I was a full-time musician. Um, and with Fate Destroyed, you know, I am starting from the bottom. I'm starting from the very bottom <laughs> and working my way back up. Um, and you know, so, I mean, it's just a process and I think that it's important to, um, take calculated risks, right? Because mm -hmm. I could have stayed at home in Texas. I do miss Texas and I will be there soon. Love you, Texas. But at the same time, um, you know, I had to do what was right to pursue the things in my life that I knew that I needed. And I think also mm -hmm. that moving to Los Angeles put me in an environment where I was surrounded by people who felt the same way that I did. I was surrounded by people when in, in Texas, if I said, I want to be a metal singer, people would be like, Oh, that's cute. But what's your real job? You know, yeah. Yeah. But in mm -hmm. Los Angeles, okay, I yeah. find myself surrounded by people who are like, Oh, you want to be a musician? Me too. That's my dream. That's my goal. That's what I want to do. And so I think that that's really mm -hmm. important. You know, it's a good environment. I mean, it yeah. is cutthroat. Anyone who says that Los Angeles isn't cutthroat is lying. People will stab you in the back to get where they want. But the thing is, is I feel like that's universally true. I feel like that happens everywhere, you know? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk a little, bit, a little bit about your influences. Uh, which are uh, the, album and, the albums and the bands that influenced you the most during your musical growth? Now you're going to make me show my age, which I think is really unfair. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna make. Okay, I'm old. All right, so let's just get that out of the way. I'm old. I'm 31. 31. Okay, 31. Yeah, so, now, <laughs> now that we've got that out of the way. Um, so the bands that influenced me while I was growing up were bands like Nine Inch Nails. Now, I used to be the biggest Nine Inch Nails fan girl. I followed them around the country. I went and saw them on multiple tours. I was like part of their fan club. I used to like, I had used to, I have all of these super rare recordings of like soundboard recordings of crazy shows and interviews and stuff from like way back when. So Nine Inch Nails was like probably the biggest influence I've ever had. Um, not necessarily saying that that translates specifically to my music because it definitely doesn't, but um, yeah. that was the kind of music that really moved me while I was mm, mm -hmm. establishing myself and trying to figure out if music is what I wanted to do professionally yeah um yeah so so there's that so nine Nails was a big one um i think as i got older and i was like you know in my younger teen years i was influenced by a lot of those uh big name like metalcore bands right like chelsea grin was a big one mm -hmm. i really loved how brutal they were that was really my i mean suicide silence was for sure my first um, exposure to really insanely heavy music um, at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, then I was introduced to bands like Whitechapel and Chelsea Grin. And it was like this long, like rabbit hole of like these really brutal bands. And so that was really formative for me. And of course I toured with Motionless and White uh, in Europe. Oh. And, um, and, you know, Chris is a great person. Everybody in the band is great. And that was also a big musical influence on me for sure. Was Nine Inch Nails. I mean, was oh. Motionless and White, you see? I'm like talking about 50 things at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, what do you think about uh, uh, band, fr female fronted band? 
Uh, what do I think about female fronted bands as a whole? Well, I would have to be silly to be like, I don't like female fronted bands. Uh, I am. <laughs> so that yeah. would be <laughs> Um, I think that I am unbelievably happy to see more women fucking bringing it in metal. And I don't just mean like, and I'm not going to disparage any band that came before, but I'm talking about the shift has come from gimmicky full female front female bands to like people like Tatiana, people like, um, the chick from spirit box, people like Nightwitch, you know, who are really going out there and showing that women can be just as aggressive as men and mm -hmm. can bring it and really bring the heavy. And what I really want to see more of, and I'm actually sort of going to contribute to this in some way that I can is, um, I'm writing my first slam song. So <laughs> we're going to get like <laughs> dirt, nasty, heavy, right. It's going to be my first song with absolutely no clean vocals. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I mean, I'm happy that the stage is opening. I'm happy to see more women being taken seriously because I feel like even five years ago, that wasn't the case. Um, and so, yeah, I think the future is bright for metal in general. Yeah, that's great. And did this uh, um, exploit of a female fronted band with uh, screen vocals inspired you? Um, I think that I was always inspired and always wanted to do metal. But I think that seeing other women be successful at it and do a very good job was very poignant to me. I mean, it's, it's difficult not to be inspired by that, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And just a curiosity, uh, how many uh, of your favorite bands did you watch live? Um, Which band? Uh, lots of them. Hold on just one second. <laughs> one second for me. Yeah, yeah. No problem. So how many of my favorite bands have I seen live? Um, mm -hmm. Live music has obviously been a big part of my life for, I don't know, ever. So I, I made it like, I've seen lots of my favorite bands. And I think that's one thing that kind of sucks about um, big metal festivals not being as predominant as they are right now. Mm -hmm. um, or as, as they used to be, because that's where I got the exposure to see a bunch of bands that I'd never heard of. You know, I would go to Warp Tour, I'd go to Rebel Rock or whatever. And that was the opportunity for me to be able to see, you know, like 30 bands that I'd never heard of. And then suddenly be like, holy sh, this is amazing. That's like the first time I ever saw in this moment. I saw mm -hmm. in this moment at a festival. I don't even remember what festival. I think it was like Lost Rages or something. I had never heard mm -hmm. of it in this moment before. And then I saw them and I was like, and I think that that yeah. is kind of something that's like robbed is now you don't get as many opportunities to be able to see the bands that you like. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Fate Destroyed. Um, let's talk a bit, a little bit uh, about the project, how the project was born and what are the story and the concept uh, behind it? How did you find the other members? Let's talk about. For sure. So, um, Fate Destroyed basically started, I told you, it started in a hotel room <laughs> mm -hmm. um, after I played a real, like the biggest show of my life. I had just played literally the biggest show of my life and I was in this hotel room and I was like feeling super unfulfilled. So I started writing Break Free um, with my friend who was also my bandmate and he actually produced the first single that we did. His uh, name is Carlton Bost and he is in Orgy and Dead Z and like a bunch of other bands. So he's like really well known and does a really good job at what he's doing. Um, and so I started working with him. And the thing that I found difficult was that, again, in Los Angeles, it's very cutthroat. And nobody was ready to take me seriously as a musician until I, nobody wants to join a band that's not established. And I want to say this just as a side note to anyone who's starting to get into music. Do not be discouraged by the fact that people do not want to join your band unless you're established. It's natural. People don't want to have to start from the ground up. So here is my key secret that anyone can follow to being able to do it, okay? <laughs> I found the best videographer that I could find. I saved up all my money for like a year, okay? Saved up all my money and I paid for the break free video. I paid for the break free video. I shot it with fill-ins. And mm -hmm. what was crucial about that video is that it showed that I wasn't fucking around. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a professionally done video. It looked great. And so then I use that to shop around for members. So instead of being like, oh, I have this idea for this band that I want to start, I was able to say, hey, here is a product. Mm -hmm. 
do you want to be a part of this? And mm. once I was able to do that, I was able to get people. Now, does it suck that you have to sort of like, you know, maybe people with more friends, <laughs> maybe people with more friends wouldn't have had such a hard time. But for me, it was difficult. So um, I spent the money and I saved up and I had a professional product done. I paid for PR for it and the song got crazy traction. It's got well over half a million streams now just on Spotify. Um, and that definitely comes from putting the work in and making sure. Um, yeah. So that's basically how I got those people to do that. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah. That's cool. cool. Really great. Uh, what about uh, the songwriting process? Uh, how do you usually come up with your ideas? Um, so the first two songs I wrote everything. Um, so that's like guitar, bass, drums, all that good, good. Um, and then Carlton did like the post-production and I think the lyrics always come naturally. I think that forcing lyrics doesn't really work. Um, so that, that's sort of that. So now the process is different because I do have actual band members, right? So now I'm able to say, well, one of my guitar players will come up with a riff and he'll send it to the other guitar players. Before COVID, we used to sit in a room and write together, but now that doesn't get to happen. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, so since then, it's been all digital, which has been challenging. It's a lot slower to write music when you're not sitting in the room vibing. And sometimes it's hard to get a feel for what somebody's doing if you're not like there. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how it starts now is somebody will come up with a riff and then I always write vocals last. <laughs> like I have like, a pa I have pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of lyrics. Oh, like, lyrics. Every oh, single thing awesome. written is in here. Um, and it says, follow your heart. <laughs> 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 um, and I will show this to you guys too, because it's true. One day I'm going to sell this book and it's going to be worth millions. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so all my lyrics are in here that I've ever written. Um, and I've got multiple ones of these. And, uh, you know, whatever seems to fit that vibe or that mood, but I'm able to transpose it onto the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, let's talk a little bit about live performances. Uh, do you remember your first live performance with the Fate Destroyed? And yes. what was your best live performance ever? Um, my first performance with Fate Destroyed was actually at this little tiny bar in Los Angeles called Loaded. I don't know if anyone remembers that place. Um, there was maybe like 12 people there, you know, big time, big time. Try not to be mm -hmm. too impressed. Um, so <laughs> so uh, we played this little tiny show and um, I still actually have pictures from it and it was kind of ridiculous. And um, it was still fun because it was our first show ever and I was super nervous and I didn't even have a full band yet. I had to have somebody uh, fill in for guitar. <laughs> um, okay. So it was a little nerve wracking. Um, and I think my favorite show was actually our last show. Um, the last mm -hmm. time that we played live, we played uh, the Juke Joint at uh, for the pre-party for Nam, which is like a mm. huge music wow. convention that happens in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was packed house, full front to back packed. Couldn't even walk in there. Um, but I think the best part about it was that like I was playing to my peers and to my best friends. You know, I've played bigger shows with Fate Destroyed. But the people that I was playing to were people that I cared about. And it, it was a, a yeah. first time a lot of people that I knew were exposed to my music because it's I know it's really weird, but it's way harder to get your friends to support your music and listen to it than it is to get strangers to listen to your music or support it, which don't also also don't be discouraged by that because it happens. Don't worry. Either they'll figure it out or they won't. Either they'll figure it out or they won't. So. Um, so, yeah, so. Uh, that was the first time I really got to expose my friends and my peers to the music that I was making and um, definitely my favorite. And I'm actually kind of glad that that was our last show uh, that we played live because it was a great high note to end on. So that was January of, uh, I think, 2019 now. Yeah. Okay. It's been okay. so long since I've played shows. Yeah. <laughs> we are really looking forward to get back on stage. So, guys, uh, That's be right. patient and do the right thing. Uh, be careful uh, out there so we can uh, play oh, yeah. as, as, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, uh, talking about playing, uh, talking about the future, what are the plans for you and Fate Destroyed 
in the near future. What are the plans for Fate Destroyed? Okay. All right, so this is actually a cool question. So we are about to release an album, which is going to come out mm, probably in two months. It's called Within These Walls. Oh. It is our first full-length album. Um, but we recorded that like two years ago, and since then we've been super busy. <laughs> we wow. are um, working on a new EP. We're also going to drop an EP this year. Um, that is an entirely new sound. Um, I feel like I was just kind of being kept in this box of like post metal core, um, music, right? Like this is, I felt like I was just following a trend. I felt like I was just trying to like beat this dead horse of this music that nobody really listens to anymore away. And I felt like I was really confined and didn't have the opportunity to flex or grow as an artist. So the new sound that we're doing, I think is different um from what anyone will be expecting and it is still ultra heavy um and that ep is going to come out in september and then we have uh we're playing two festivals this year i can't say oh, what they are yet because they haven't made announcements but they are in late yeah. september and just keep an eye on our social media and you will know uh where to catch us next yeah and talking about social media fede i think this is the right time to show our people all the social media of uh yeah, fede. Fede. Fede destroyed so you can Facebook.com slash fate destroyed, Instagram.com slash fate destroyed band, or you can find me, or you can find any of us. You can find our Twitter, you can find everything. We are everywhere. We are really good. Uh, yeah. That's great. That is the worst. Okay. In the meanwhile, let's say hello to some people there, and we then we can go on. Let's say hello to our friend Gulam Murtaza. Hi. Hey, Gulam. Hi. And also, also, yeah, go on, Fede. Yeah, Hong Kim says, up, Fede. Hi, Hi what's up? Uh, yeah. That's, um, oh, also, Michele. we have a... Yeah, Michele, where is Mary Michele? Okay. Yeah, he's okay. a friend of mine. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I just see a pair of phones. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. yeah he loves music. Uh, okay, we today is really, um, really speed the live chat because you know, yeah, uh, Francesca, I has, like it. It. you know, but I'm yeah, just... that's that's not a problem. Uh, we that's fine, you know, so, yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. I, uh, 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 by the way, thank you, thank you for taking your time with us. Right. You know, I'm yeah. seeing this, this Matthew Lee Hansen, thank you for saying that. I'm glad you like the new single. We have put out like two this year already, and we're I don't know if we're going to put anything else out until, I mean, we'll, I was thinking about dropping a music video today. I haven't decided. I feel like maybe I should drop a music video, but I don't know. I'm going to, I put a poll on Instagram. So I'm going to see if people are interested in seeing a new uh, Fate Destroyed music video. And if so, then maybe I'll just drop it today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wait for it. Uh, okay. Um, Francesca, do you have any other project besides Fate Destroyed? There is literally not enough time in the world for me to have another project. <laughs> Fade Destroyed, I put all my eggs in one basket with Fade Destroyed. So, okay. Fade Destroyed the, was, that's literally it. All the focus on it, that's great. Yeah. Okay, and uh, which are your hobbies and interests interest beside music? So, uh, I have lots of hobbies actually one of them is cars i'm really super into building and racing cars um and that's what i do with most of my free time and if i had any free money ever then it would definitely go <laughs> because right now all of my extra money goes towards the band but um so i have uh, i have a couple of cars and then i have a motorcycle so i do that a lot as wow. well so pretty much anything motorsports i really like to be outside um i also like to hike a lot uh, myself and my friend uh, have been hiking a lot recently in the last couple months, and I want to continue with that because it's a great way to stay in shape. And yeah, um, yeah like tattoos and shows and all kinds, all the general stuff that you would definitely expect. I'm definitely into all of that for sure. Okay, okay, that's great. Uh, so, guys, uh, if you want to be updated also on uh, what Fr Francesca is up to, um check also her personal uh Yay! artist pages so here they are 
Yeah. And I, and I mean, I do a lot of modeling and I do a lot of stuff like that. So you can, I'm always constantly doing new photo shoots and trying to like, I don't know, play with my style and, and see what feels nice and see what works. And I think that that is really important to be an artist is that you can't just like stick to one sort of creation, right? Like you have to be able to be mm -hmm. dynamic and explore other means and other outlets to be able to create, whether that's, um, you know, through music or painting or sewing or whatever, I just think yeah. that um, I think that it's important to diversify whatever it is that you're doing because you can't just like you get burned out if you do the same thing over and over again, no matter how much you love it, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's good. I see a, a nice comment here from Hun Kim who says Francesca looks like Cruella de Vil. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have no idea. I'm just <laughs> I would need the other half to be black, but it's purple. They said I look like Cruella de Vil. I do kind of. I shouldn't have worn the red lipstick. I never wear red lipstick, but I was like trying it out today because I'm like, I, I just bought my first ever piece of gold because um, I'm usually really cheap because I spend my money on my music and not on things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I bought my first ever piece of gold and I'm like, what is classier than gold and red lips? I can think of nothing. So I did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we usually end our live chat with a final speech, final personal speech. If you want to uh, give us your advice or whatever you want want to tell to our friends, the stage is yours right now. So say whatever you want. My advice is that you should never stop at anything in pursuit of your dreams. Like, mm -hmm. you also have to remember to take pride and to be proud of progress because sometimes it's not always about you know, I also have those feelings where I'm sitting here like, why am I still having to work at 95, nine to five? Why am I on my lunch break right now and not just able to do this full time? Why are my numbers not at what these people's numbers are? Why do I only have half a million streams when I, this person has 20 million streams? You have to remember that everything about life and everything about music and everything about anything that you pursue in general, whether it be financial success, whether it be some artistic venture, whether it be a business venture, whether it be relationships, the thing you have to remember is that you always have to be appreciative of progress, right? Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to take comfort in the little things. So that is my biggest piece of advice is just don't get discouraged. It's hard. It's a hard industry. Every little bit of progress matters. Every single thing that you do matters. And it's important to take stock and to think about those things and to make sure that, you know, okay. you're fine with that. So that's it. So that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was really Thank inspiring. So uh, <laughs> really, really good for everybody, I think, in whatever field that you work or you want to uh, pursue your dreams. Uh, so I really enjoyed uh, your... Uh, Super uh, positive energy, uh, Francesca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you have to be. You have to stay positive. That's like there is nothing else besides that, right? Because <laughs> the entire world can go to crap around you, and you, if you're, if you're negative, then you're gonna get sucked down with it. And my advice is, don't get sucked down with it because it's hard to climb out once yeah. you're at the bottom. So. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, super quick but inspiring live chat. You know what? Sometimes uh, it's sometimes it's quality over quantity, right? It was short. Absolutely, I yeah. Feel like, I feel like we got a lot. I feel like we talked about a lot, um, <laughs> and I'm really glad that I got to do this. And I am grateful for the people that stopped in for, and I'm grateful for the people that stopped in here. Thank you, everyone who took the time to make a comment and interact with us. I sincerely appreciate it. I hope you like my music. Keep your eyes out for what's coming next for Fate Destroyed. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, also, uh, never give up uh, on your dreams. Also, Fede, don't give up on your electro pop acoustic uh, project with uh, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and Julia. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you know, Francesca, today we did uh, no song April Fools, and a lot of people uh, fell into it. Everybody, everybody thinks that now Fede. Uh, uh, has just leave the band. I'm still to... in the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> did did you did you do did you do some April Fools today, Francesca? No, but nah. no. pranks make me uncomfortable. Is that weird? I always feel bad. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> but but well, that well today a lot of people thought that uh, Federico and Julia left the band to. Oh make no! Some, some well, kind I, of, I, uh, yeah. 
I'm but, glad you didn't leave the band. No, no, it, it was a joke, guys. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm still in the band, unfortunately. Yeah, don't worry, Faye. <laughs> For you you're guys. With us. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> But don't give up on your dream with no, your no, no, no. electro pop duo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> as, as you know, guys, uh, we we did a special playlist on uh, Spotify for our guests. So oh. you you will find also uh, Fate Destroyed on our uh, special yeah. uh, guest playlist, Rem Sky Metal and Rock guest. Check it out on Spotify as well as check out uh, uh, Fate Destroy. And of course, remember to uh, set a reminder on our Facebook page and YouTube channel so you won't miss our next, next live chats. And yeah. uh, don't forget to follow Fate Destroy and Francesca. And as you may know, we just uh, released uh, um, the pre-order of our 10th anniversary, anniversary limited edition of uh, One Way Out, so you can check it out if you want. And yeah. I think that's it. Again, right. Francesca, thank you so much for being thank with you so us. Much. And thank you so much. time. Thank you. For giving us such good vibes. And, uh, <laughs> great energy. Good work for today. Yeah, all right. Well, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you, bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.